In 2019, the Bitcoin Next% percent turned the running world upside down. But in 2021, is the latest version more than a victory lap? Today, let's explore the Nike ZoomX Vaporfly Next% percent 2. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, helping you simplify tech and running to improve your life. Vaporfly Next% percent 2 is here. Been able to spend some good time in the shoe. And I really want to figure out like whether or not this is just a moderate update or something else. And so one of the beauties of Nike shoes in general to me is that it offers a full experience from the point that before you purchase it, to the point that you get it on your feet, to the time and the memories that are created afterwards. As a matter of fact, with the previous version of these, I ran my 5K best, my 10K best, and I think I even ran a 10 mile best in these. So. To say that I'm biased about this shoe is absolutely correct, but I do wanna look at like, all right, is this version decidedly better? Let's begin what happens when you uh, take it out the box. One of the things you'll notice as soon as you put it in your hand, it's incredibly lightweight, it's very beautiful looking. One of the first things that I thought about was Jeezy's all white everything. I thought about all the all white parties that I used to go to back when parties were a thing. And I think, and I believe going into just the spring slash summertime, this is an awesome colorway. One of the things that your eyes naturally gravitate towards is that upper. And that's where one of the major changes takes place from the previous version. And this one, you're getting a very like cool, very clearly breathable, soft feeling material in the upper. And I think that had a lot to do with it. There was a lot of feedback that I believe Nike re received in terms of vapor weave just being a little bit like too like scrunchy. It just wasn't a very like comfortable upper. And I happened to be in the minority in that case and actually really enjoyed it. But this was a nice update. This mesh fabric is not only soft, but is incredibly breathable and you can actually see through it in terms of just the amount of like air floating that can happen through this. So if you're a person that feet get hot, we're going to the late part of spring and the summer, this is definitely offer a cool option. The tongue is like slightly padded. It's not a lot. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that I point out to you is that the tongue does still kind of move around a little bit. You've got to kind of do some stuff to kind of get it into place. The laces are a nice update as well. And there are checks everywhere. It's as if Nike wanted to make sure that we all understood that when it comes to aesthetics, they are unmatched. Now, so the fit. The, one of the biggest changes in the fit this year is that the toe area is definitely bigger. We've got the midfoot that still offers a great deal of security. And then you've got the heel lock that takes place with some additional padding there. So overall, it provides a nice package. And I believe that one of the nice things about this update is that a lot more people will be inclined to be able to pick these up. Also, the availability is crazy. At the time that I'm recording this video, there's still sizes available. Now, for my personal running style, I would have liked the toe area to remain snug because I just like for my foot to feel like it won't move around a lot. But this update, it's definitely different. And I know that this is the case because I put on the previous shoes and ran a couple of workouts in it and then ran a workout in these. And I was like, uh, these are definitely more spacious. But during the run, this shoe is nothing short of magical. It begins with the midsole made of that money ZoomX. It provides a great deal of cushioning, responsiveness, your legs just feel good. It feels like effortless fast. And because of that, it feels like you can push even harder because your legs aren't getting beat up during a run. When it comes to the midsole, that is where the real advantage is. And I've said this since 2019 and I will continue to say it. Don't get me wrong, the Carmen Fire Plate is nice, adds a little bit of rigidity once you get up to speed for you to continue to hold it, but it means nothing without the midsole. So the combination of that midsole with a really nice outsole that provides a great deal of traction. I've actually even run on these on grass. I'm not advising that you do that, but I have run on them uh, in grass and I was able to get uh, unexpected amount of traction on that. They're designed for the road. Uh, one other thing I would say about the ride is that it took me a while to get used to running in these. I haven't run in carbon fiber plates in months. And so I tried out the previous version and then came to this version um, last week or so. And so I managed to turn my ankle a little bit. I managed to have some issues when it came to just being used to being stable. But once I got out there for a bit longer, I was able to keep it rocking and keep it rolling. I was able to take it out for an eight mile progression run through the beautiful streets of Crenshaw and I just fell back in love with the overall feeling in terms of being in these shoes, being able to transition really well from my easy running pace all the way down to my expected half marathon pace. And one of the most overlooked aspects of this shoe is the way you feel the day after a run. I ran my fastest eight mile the other day 
effortlessly. And then my feet felt good afterwards. My quads felt good. And it was had a, had a decent amount of uphill and downhill. And usually on those type of scenarios and situations, my legs feel beat up, I gotta soak, I gotta get a massage. None of that needed to happen. And I felt like, oh wow, I can probably still go faster. Now don't get me wrong, I'm getting to a decent level of fitness, but come on now. Like if you have a shoe that does all of those three things, then clearly like this shoe really is more than just a victory lap. It's more than just an update. When it comes to durability, these are racing shoes, so I don't really trip too much off of that. I'd say like 150, 200. I know in my previous pair of these, after about like 125, they still felt good, but they just didn't feel like as springy. I would also say that when you consider like a racing shoe, think about this in terms of like training blocks and not in terms of like years. Yes, you're spending a bunch of money one time, but you're trying to look to get one great effort out of these shoes as well as uh, a couple of like key workouts. And so think about the shoe from that standpoint. So this is certainly not the play that you make in terms of trying to figure out how can you get the best dollar for your money. It's about a full experience. For $250, like that's gonna be expensive for you potentially, right? But the thing that I would say is that like, this is a world-class tool that world-class athletes use. And so provided that your bills are paid and your responsibilities are taken care of, why not splurge? It's a great opportunity to have a full experience as far as a shoe. When it comes to comparisons, I look at these in the same way they look kind of like a Drake. It's like, it only makes sense to compare Drake songs to other Drake songs at this particular point. And so these shoes are in like manner. So there are two Nike shoes that I think that you can compare these to. One being the Alpha Fly. I would still take the next percent too over the Alpha Fly just because of the ground contact. And I tend to spend more time in like the 5K, 10K um, racing type range. And it just fits more natural to my overall form. And then you got the original Vaporfly next percent, which I tend to kind of think that I would still choose those. And it really has to do with the fact that the fit just is a little bit better for me. The other thing is, and it's real subtle, I mentioned that you know you take these out of the box, Nike, come on, like you didn't give us a black box for 250, like give us the black box, give us the the running bag, just complete the overall experience. And I think it's possible that now that they're like the shoes are more available, maybe that first one was like kept and meant to be a very like special moment. And so I would say if you can get your hands on the previous version, do that. But for most people, if you're if you're new to just checking out the Vaporfly Next Percent at all then the current version is gonna be the one that I would suggest that you pick up. In terms of a rotation, like these are a racing shoe. You pair this with your everyday trainer and you're good to go. 5K through the marathon, no problem. I know the website says 10K. I believe it's a little bit of marketing at play there. Like I don't know any firsthand information, but there are some rumors about something else coming out later on in the year. And so we'll see. I don't really get into the rumor game too much, but I tend to just look at some of what the marketing says as an indicator there might be something coming. So as a guy that likes to do more mid distance, I would love to see a like a streak with some Zoom X in there and a plate or something like that. With the Vaporfly Next Percent 2's wider availability, improved upper and evolved fit, it helps position it as a racing option that is second to none. But I can't help but wonder, what's next? I appreciate you taking the time and watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a like. And if you want to consider me as a resource to you when it comes to your running and tech needs, I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out something else, you can check this out. And if you want to check out another running related video, check this out. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.